So in general, we believe that uh, we right now at this you know, very exciting era, uh, that robots are starting to be used also for social interaction and not only for you know, supply chain or machine or you know, supply chain control. And there's a lot of challenges in this social human robot interaction and in trying to understand what people infer from robot movement and how this interaction can be more meaningful. And we believe that the research on new types of materials can be very effective uh, for industry to try and create the next generation of this world. Uh, so in this I want to invite Ido, which will explain a little more about the details of how we do all of this motion. Hey. Uh, so, um, Owen talked about uh, how we're doing all this non-verbal communication with these objects. And so movement is obviously a very important thing. And I want to talk a bit about through this kind of uh, case study about uh, how we study communication with movement. So this is the uh, Jimmy. Jimmy is short for greeting machine. It's a robotic object that is uh, meant to be used for investigating how we communicate a uh, human robot interaction in this specific encounter of uh, an encounter of a uh, greeting. So the meeting encounter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this function of it. It's basically a ball that moves over another ball. So the small ball kind of can move freely over the first ball. Shlomo, you'll see in the, also, we mentioned before, it also took part in the beginning of this uh, development of this thing. And uh, Andre here is a product of the, uh, designer. Uh, is responsible for the later stages of it. Um, and uh, what we made this object for is really for researching movement. So we tried to make it as abstract as possible using very, very clean and simple lines, just basically two balls. It's very hard to put any association on it. People, and we, we tested it, people can sometimes see it as two different uh, creatures, sometimes people would select a small ball as a face, and so on. Uh, now this is kind of the stages of how we made it. So, um, of course we moved from like a... Materials uh, you can see in the on the right. We moved to a more robust design. We found really hard a lot of forces actually moving between the, the two magnets there. So there's a kind of robotic arm that moves uh, with a magnet on it moves the ball outside. So we moved into this uh, for this design with a slip ring in the middle and these two uh, um, what do you call it like, uh, parts that um, hold one against the other. Um, but uh, already in the very early designs, or around uh, yeah, the second one, um, we started getting into movement. And um, we started making a very, very elaborate uh, prototype. Uh, that's basically the dome with a stick stuck inside the ball. And uh, we made this like a silly thing to start looking at, at uh, motion. So as we said before about uh, we went to look at materials, so we went to talk with experts and let them play with the materials and made platforms for them to do it. Uh, we have the same philosophy here. We are not experts in movement, or at least one at a time. We're becoming more and more now. Uh, so we made a forum where we uh, sat down with a choreographer, a puppeteer, an animator, um, graphic designer also does some animation and we sat together with this object and a stick and we let them play with it and animate them their and make their own movements and see and talk about how would this thing, can this thing uh, express happiness, how can it be sad, how can it be bored, what kind of character can it have, can we give it different personalities. Uh, so that was kind of an exploration process to start inform us of how we can create meaningful interactions with this thing. And then we use that information to uh, inform us in a uh, later state of design. So this is a tool, it's not exactly a tool, this is the, we made it, one of the main uh, competencies of the lab, I'd say, is this tool that we made for uh, enemy robots. So usually movement is, that of robots is designed by programmers, and we want to give people that uh, know how to do it, tools to do it. So this is a uh, Blender, it's an open source uh, animation software, and we made an add-on for it, basically to take the animation files from it to animate our own robot. So if I, I'll just kind of jump here. So this is a Blender, and you can see the different uh, X's. What we basically realized is that uh, 
if we take each of these bones um, and only limit it to move in like one X, uh, then we can then they're the same as a motor. Uh, this is work that we made, uh, we've done originally with uh, Professor Guy Hoffman, who was uh, co-founder of, uh, co of the lab. Uh, he's now at Cornell, but we still collaborate together. If you don't know his work, you should definitely check out his TED talk. It has a very inspirational thing to do with uh, robotics. Um, and uh, this basically gave us, gives us the... So, yeah, it, we basically take the frames uh, from this and play it on the robot, same as you would on a movie. Of course, a bit more complicated than that, because uh, it's not just like you can't make these uh, frames on a robot, and you need to figure out some physics and uh, play around with uh, how you do the commands for the motors. Um, but that's basically the idea. And um, so after we made these things, we uh, played them on our robots. And then, as I said, we talked about um, interactions, so we went out and then made uh, some experiments with uh, people coming into the room and meeting this robot. We designed different kinds of uh, gestures. Uh, main ones are kind of an approach gesture and a void gesture. And we made different variations of them. So um, this is uh, one interesting variation, I think, uh, of a kind of linear direct motion, more of a probing motion, compared to an animated one. Uh, kind of starts and finishes in the same place, but uh, the other one has uh, was designed by an animator. And um, what we, I'll just say in a few words what we, what we learned from this study. We found that with this really, really abstract object, we can create uh, what we define as uh, a meaningful